I am also a master of psychology and with the issues in feminist psychology. My current study, I'm writing a psychobiography on my area of my So I'm so excited. I'm so excited to be facilitating this program because Prof. Taylor is one of the people I'm referring to in my Everybody, thank you for, for organizing this. This first outing of uh, this cooking I've done here. Um, I'm amazing. I'm like Spikiri. I don't know whether you know Spikiri. Some people know who Spikiri is. I'm prettier than Muhammad Ali. When I was writing this book, I felt like I was floating at some point. Um, that's uh, what I'm feeling from a certain point, about 2014, when I entered a certain space of thinking. I'm like Fela then. See, I'm done with the nonsense teacher. That's what Fela said, right? I was playing some Nina Simone earlier because, yeah, I've been like a sinner man who's being freed from sin. I'm like guru. Listen to a lot of music when I was writing this. I have a desk facing the road and I would watch people that listen to music. There's one of three spaces I wrote from and I brought together in this collaboration. 
And you can't see it's collaboration, you see. You can't see that it's a collaborative work of being in the same room with women, men, young and old, of learning to see in a particular way, to hear and to read. Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling like I'm like Tandi Samozoi, yeah, at some points. Like Bessie Head, like Miriam, huh? Yeah. Like I'm Johannes Pukela. Somebody was saying this on Facebook yesterday. I enjoy Johannes Pukela's work. The irony is amazing. Like I'm support. <coughs> or any artist selling his work or her work on the side of the road. What I've learned from the music, from the art, from the dancing, from Casper Nuvest, is the art, the art of struggle. The art of struggle to create, to dare to create, to be free, and to be wrong. Somebody was talking about this quite a lot. And to write as if I, I like, as if, it, as if I love. Premesh Lalu said, Biko could not write what he liked, actually. I don't know. I'm too unknown to be humble. And too, to be modest. To be humble and voiceless is to misappreciate the discourse of power, actually. Mandela could afford to be humble. You and I, certainly me, I have to fight to write and sing and see what I like. So I'm like Taiwa Moleleko, right? Like Lucky Dube or Naila Blackman, or Peter Tosh. I'm not Brenda Fars, it's weekend special. What I am is all week, all year special. <laughs> Who do you think you are? Who do I think I am to feel, after all the struggle, after all the ancestors, to be regarded as fully human, that I'm nothing? I think Mandela said something like that. I'm paraphrasing, or close to that. I'm like Ali Farka Ture from Billy Holiday. So the point of all this is there's a certain point, there's a certain thing we don't do in our classes to tell, especially black women, young black women, young black men, that they're amazing. That they have to learn to trust their voice. And I learned this from hip hop heads, from youngster Cape Town, from Nas. From Kanye West when and Jeezy saying, I'm amazing. And they mean that. Because the world doesn't want them to be amazing. They'll shoot them before they say good morning. So you're amazing, believe it, this is what I now know. It. I know it on the surface of my skin. I know it in my arteries, I know it in the deep recesses of my being. A professor, a friend of mine says, there's a certain space in Cape Town. This is somebody who's an amazing woman. Says when she gets into this space, she feels she doesn't belong. She was born in Cape Town. I always find that's quite amazing, but I know it's a common thing. It's a common thing. Why a book like this then? Let me just uh, get more traditional. I, I don't know. I would like to know at uh, some point today who will read this book and how. I have no idea actually who the readers of the book will get, who what they are and what they will get from, from it. What I'm trying to play here, what I call for students, for young scholars, for young scientists, and out of school groups, those we call dropouts, what I call them to see and to do. But I damn like what I wrote. And I started wanting to do this book myself, from the first way I wrote to its selling. And I got in touch with young black men who are editors. I well, like, got in touch with one, who's a law student, by the way, but he's amazing. This is a queer young man who's doing law, but he's also a photographer, and he, he does these amazing things. He just does stuff. I said, I have a book project. I want you to, to take it from, from me to produce it. I was trying to do a book in a, in a different way. I've done so many books, really, in a traditional way. And he took it and he gave it to young, another young man. 
uh, inventor, but he didn't quite do what I wanted to do. Um, so I said, thanks, but maybe we'll do another thing. Let me, I was trying to do an independent indie in book writing. I took it and I gave it to, to uh, Roshan Carter. Oh, she's amazing. I've never said a, a publisher is amazing. She looked at it. She says, I don't know what you're trying to do here. I don't know what you're trying to do, but let's see. And this, this is what you have. Because I, I will write probably, like all of you, I'm forced to write every year, three, four, five articles where I do the boring stuff. I'm going to tell you this, I tell you this, and I just tell you what I just told you. That's how we write, right? <laughs> I said, no, 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 I, I don't want to. I can do that. That's, that's not the book I want to write, that I really want to write. And from now on, there are books that I want to write and the books that I'm forced to write. I wish I could let go of the books that I'm forced to write and the things I'm forced to do. I hope I've put up one model. I have, see I don't have a model. I've never had a model in the discipline in which I was schooled and the discipline that I work in, which is different from the third discipline in which I lead a unit. And in all the disciplines I read, from health to sociology to women's studies, to philosophy, to politics, to history, and to masculinities. Some of you may have been lucky enough, fortunate enough, to have that model of, uh, of a free scholar, of an anti-colonial scholar. I think all of us always go to two people, or many of us anyway. We go to Fano, right? Some of us may go to Amy Cesare, a little bit further back, or maybe Simor, a little bit further back. And outside of the classroom, you go to Biko, right? Uh, a model of an African scholar. And so I'm very happy to have come after this discussion we had. An African scholar in the way Grace Musila suggests that some people have a problem of being an African scholar when they reach a certain point. And she says, what's this? I mean, what, what is this that you can't be an African scholar and write for the world and be on the world stage? A more courageous scholar, a free, anti-colonial, unruly African in the way I'm learning to feel since 2014 in particular, in the way I write in this book. So here's the core of why a book like this. I absolutely, absolutely intend a certain kind of seeing of learning, of creating, of being, of being, of being. But only time will tell you the kind of independence of seeing, of evading Europe and America. A feeling of thought is the kind my students, my students in particular, and those whose lives I could contribute to desire. I don't know whether this is it, but that's okay. In fact, I encourage that this is not be their way of seeing the world. So what does the book do? You would think what the author of a book such as this would desire is something similar to that of a charismatic preacher, that I want followers. Uh, but you'd be wrong, actually. <laughs> I would be satisfied if I wake up dead, as they say in Jamaica, if I wake up dead and a, and a bench, um, would be named after me on my street. Um, maybe even a lecture room in a psychology department. Actually, no, you'd be wrong. I, I don't want that. I absolutely want that. No awards for me. Sorry, Nobu. <laughs> I like awards for other people. I like giving awards as a matter of fact. My, my wish is to be the object of criticism. I really would like, instead of Baudrillard or Jack Halberstam, I want my students to criticize me, to, to say, Ratele, you are completely wrong on this one. You are wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. I want to hear students reject my ideas. I really want that. I want to be shown I am wrong, 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 wrong. Not African psychologists, not African people, that me, me. And this is what Tanahisi calls 
says without so many words. If you lift yourself up a little bit, if you could be, in fact, he takes it from Fanon, right? I want to be hated for myself, for me, not for black people. And at that moment, you have entered a certain space because I'm not confused with Sipo Lameni, with Nesiswatiti, Rebecca Hellman. I'm conf it's me, it's my, the world looks like this from inside. When I say from here, I don't mean only a location. I mean that as well, from Africa. But I also mean consciousness. Like literally, I see something different from you. And that is an important thing. That is lifting existence to the level of the human. As a matter of fact, uh, it already started because uh, two days ago I received a paper uh, in response to something I wrote and somebody says, further thoughts on African psychology, a different view. And then the abstract says, I reject what Radele is saying. I think, I like that. <laughs> no, really. But they send it to me, so that's not a good idea, actually. <laughs> So what is the book about? It's about clearing confusion, <clears throat> certainly my own. It's about disalienation. The book was called, been sent to, the, to the, the publisher and to this young man, first of all, African Psychology for the Confused. And they said, no, 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 we don't like that. African Psychology for the Alienated. They said, mm, yeah, mm, OK, yeah, mm, but there's something here we'd like you to do a little bit more of. And I, went back and I did that. They said, maybe because of your writing as if you're writing for a Twitter age, we can, we can soften the title. And I had the title, the third title, this is what you see. It's about a certain way of seeing the world, of relearning, remembering to see the world with your own eyes. It's a hard thing, actually, this thing of seeing, of seeing, of looking, and telling people, this is what I see. Thank you, Mr. Foucault. of leaning to read again, I read the page as if as somebody was saying, this is terrible, right? I mean, this is the most amazing thing. The moment you read and you re realize that Fanon was existing, and Foucault doesn't reference Fanon, at least in his writing, he says, what is happening here? So Marx was not writing for, for the colonial subject. Freud was not writing for the colonial subject, was not writing for me. Of course, it's already a disruption the moment you read Freud, right? When he says primitive, but the primitive is writing, is reading Freud. He says, okay, yeah. <laughs> so I started on a journey of to hell with itness. I'm stopping caring about what I should care about, what I'm told to care about, about a certain kind of respect that conceals infrahumanization, a certain infrahumanizing dis that I can't be African and original and see the world from here and talk to the world from here. That I can't create, I can't fly. This is a book about psychological freedom. Point 98, page 205. Discursive freedom, freedom to look, to feel, to think. So let me do that. <coughs> this uh, chapter starts by talking about political freedom, goes on to say psychological freedom, being such a historically inflected, dense, context-dependent phenomenon is a founding supposition of African psychology, the way I see it. Racism does not end at the structural level. The level of the law, police, white terrorism, segregated neighborhoods, an unequal education, but requires psychological strategies to oppress, to govern, to terrorize, segregate, and make unequal. Racist control is a behavioral, cognitive, and emotional condition as much as a legal, institutional, and representational fact. Hence, to free people's actions, thoughts, perceptions, and feelings, we need a disciplinary orientation that is not reluctant to nurture African psychological self-determination. So what am I trying to achieve with the book? 
I do not want to have the last word to repeat what I said earlier on, uh, on African psychology. And let me read something again. Point 100. The last point. I will not have the final word, especially when we consider the future, such as what an introductory textbook on African-centered psychology would look like, or one on social psychology, or on neuropsychology from an African-centered perspective, on African-centered child development, or any other area of psychology that situates African realities, African-centered knowledge and knowledge making, and African lives at the center. It is obvious that a great many more words have to come. A great deal more work is necessary. However, in the end, I return to the questions that contain the most potential for the work that must be done towards centering Africa in psychology. What does it mean, as Sipo was, to say African in African psychology? What does it mean? What precisely does the project of centering Africa and Africans entail? When will the time come when the majority of African students of psychology and African psychologists have, come, have overcome the enervating, even re-traumatizing inferiority complexes imposed on them in relation to US and European psychology? But I will have my word. I will speak. I will teach students, as I've been doing then, since then. And I will learn from students as much as I do from artists, from dancers, from architects, or oh, architects, Francis. Francis, is this Gary, Derry, from um, Burkina Faso? The work that he does is amazing. You don't have to call it African-centered, but he talks about where he lives. From Shoma Josie, from Dumile Feni, from Youngster Cape Town, from the Soul Brothers, remember the Soul Brothers? From Basket and Common. And do not forget, do not forget Derrida, alongside Toyin Falula and Fatou Sou. So. so I will create spaces. This idea is to create spaces, discursive spaces, emotional spaces, physical spaces, similar to what Andre really is doing here. To bring together psychologists, architects, musicians, photographers, filmmakers, um, and I wanted images in the book but they were prohibitive because the images are precisely what artists do, right? Photographers, this is what I see. This is what she sees here. And she's amazing. This work is amazing. This was at the Cape Town Art Festival. I don't know about this, but it's fantastic because precisely this, this is because both architects and art students work in a different way from psychology students, right? They work in a, sometimes in, in studio kinds of lecture rooms, so they feed from each other, right? And they learn to do certain things, I guess, collaborating with each other. And we try to create that where I work. So along sociologists, health scientists, activists. So this is an invitation for me. This is an invitation, the first letter to my students about how to learn to see the world, to create, and to create us as well, of all stripes, to think a certain way. Oh, that's a wrong thing to say. I don't want them to think in a certain way. I want them to think from where they are, to think about their experiences and write them down, of doing or being together and bringing something together into existence. Thank you.
we'll be moving on to the question and answer session. I will take five hands in the first round, and then we can just take it from there. Okay. Okay, that's it. That's it. Let's go. <laughs> Tricks of one.
I've got the book, so <laughs> I'll check it out later. Uh, uh, I'll be interested to hear what you say about what you say about uh, Professor Mangani's book. Uh, you know what I what I said. We spoke about this already. Okay, well, I'll repeat it. <laughs> Because the book promises to talk about black psychology and the nature of a black psychologist, but it doesn't get there. So, mm -hmm. so I hope you don't also tease us and don't get there. <laughs> Do we need psychology in Africa? We talked about decolonizing psychology, but do we even need psychology in Africa? I'm glad that they say the term the word is in your title of the book. Because our mental neurosis our mental illnesses in Africa for many of us, which is intergenerational, of course, in a secular colonial context, has to do with the fact that secular colonialism meant the shattering of our social cultural world. Right? That's what it meant, right? The, the secular comes, they impose their world, our we become dewelded. Our social cultural world become dismembered. That's the first point, right? So, 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 what kind of how do we how do we remake our world? And does psychology help us with that? The the notion of disalienation. Uh, you know, I was a chairperson of an organization called Kuluwani Support Group, which is a hundred thousand more than hundred thousand members, victims of apartheid, people have been tortured, people who have lost their family members, disappearances, and so forth. And for us, we found psychology to be doing more damage than good. Because for example, the notion of PSTD in Africa, does it exist or does it play itself differently? So if someone goes to a psychologist because of a trauma, their child has disappeared, and the therapist works with them, but it's not enough. Because for us, we realized that for our members, trauma meant that they were, they were, how do I put this? They were taken out from the triatic community, the, the, the community of the living, the living dead, and the year to be born. That is a community here. And that's what the individual needs to be remembered with, to be taken back to. And psychology doesn't help us with that because it, <coughs> works with an individual as an individual without this understanding that in African society the trauma works out differently. So so that's my question. Can psychology be decolonized and do we need this psychology? Okay. Um, yeah. Thanks. But first of all, Sipo, thanks. Really appreciate this. Um, your comments, physicist though you are, we forgive you for that. <laughs> <laughs> now, some of my best friends are physicists. <laughs> really, I, 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 this is this is it, Sipu. The right to be, um, and, and you put it well. And but I just changed it at the end. So it feels like a, I, and I, I speak about this right. Uh, in one note, that I had to be professor first and then turn away from psychology. That this is stuff is not working for me. Uh, and I, had, I still have to write in this, in this other way, right? Uh, I work in an institution where I have to write in the Lancet. I have to write this because they want high impact journals. I have to, so I, I still have to do that. Um, when I, what I want is to is to write what I like. And, and after I've written it, to say, yeah, at least in this 40,000 words, there's one sentence that, that, uh, that makes, that really gives me joy. And that's a, that's a, that's a real problem, right? And, and I'm trying to do this long after with my students. That you, I, I can't hear you here. I know when we talk and when you write, there's a disjuncture right there. So we, we gotta go back and, and, and don't impress me with how much you've read. I need to, to hear, I need to hear you about what you have read here. And that's a, it's a, it's a new journey for me and it's, it's, it's fantastic, but by the way, it's a really fantastic, it's intense. Crane, um, I mentioned Mangani um, several times here. And so 
page 33 and 34. Mangani received this award, I see, um, at Roots. Uh, I've read Mangani for a long time. Um, and I have discussions with Sipul Lamini in particular about, about Mangani. I read. And the being black has been, has been brought out in the same moment with this book. <coughs> Vets Press is bringing them, republishing being black in the world. Um, alienation in the Body and Racist Society, a study of society that invented Soweto, Mashangu's Reverie, another essay. I think that was the first book I read, Mangani, not the being black. Looking through the keyhole, dissenting essays on the black experience. I still have a, the original copy. Uh, Treachery and Innocence, I read that. Um, so there was something about Mangani being the, f the, the first African psychologist, the f in the, in the, in the, the first black in a, in a racial sense, and the categories of apartheid. And so what he didn't have is what some of us have, and what I'm hoping the next generation of, student, of scholars that I'm teaching would have. He didn't have people to speak to him. That's it. And you can feel it. In the chapter called Black Consciousness, Mangani doesn't mention once Bani Pichana, Seth Cooper, Steve Biko. And we have to interpret why he didn't do that, right? We have to think, maybe he was afraid. He was afraid to be jailed, to mention Steve. But the whole, so he mentioned black consciousness without mentioning who were the black conscious uh, inventors, originators. But because he wrote Mangani Becomes an Ancestor, and I write about that. And I, the second part I mention is, who is the father in South Africa of black psychology? of African psychology. And I say psychology has many fathers in Africa, as a matter of fact. Mangani is one of the fathers. If you think about psych African psychology in a particular way, but Wilcox, who has a building named after him, Stellenbosch, is also one of the fathers of African psychology. And that is highly contested by, by, uh, by some Afri Afri African-centered Afrocentrists. They says, no, you can't say white people are fathers of African psychology. But then they have to twist themselves in all kinds of shape because then you're saying these people are in Africa, but they're not. Africanas in the sense that Africana is African, right? So you have to do this all sorts of stuff. But this is the things I'm, I'm willing and I'm, I'm, I'm inviting that we discuss a lot about what do you do with the racist fathers, the fathers who hated you? What do you do with them? And I know Stellenbosch psychologists, black psychologists at Stellenbosch are dealing with this matter right now, that they want to take Wilcox's name from the buildings, from the history, but I say, no, I, this is not what I'm, I, I think we should be doing. I think we can imagine as, uh, something else, something else, but I guess I'm, I'm happy to be wrong. So Mangani was conservative. He was uh, slightly to the right, but you know, he was writing, he was uh, conscious in a particular way, but it was like Kenneth Clark in America. And I, I told this story about Kenneth Clark. Remember Kenneth Clark in America? And Mammy Clark? <laughs> Kenneth Clark was a reformist. So I was a conservative, I mean that. I mean, he was a reformist in one sense, right? was an assimilationist. Um, and so there's something that you hope, uh, uh, Kenneth Clark writes about black children, where I write about black children preferring white dolls. And Kenneth Clark is, is, not, uh, is not well, you know, is regarded until the case. That study comes into the Board of Education uh, and then they say, you know, and then he gets set in esteem. But if you put Kenneth Clark right there, you put, um, Akbar, you put the other radicals, the people who started the Association of Black, black Psychologists. You can see how, how Mangani is used, but he's our ancestor. Mangani started something we have to write against, we have to criticize, we have to teach, particularly we have to teach. Because somewhere Mangani does what you all do, he becomes completely radical. He has this phrase, colonial discourse knows no geography. I'm thinking, this is a beautiful line. It's an amazing line. <laughs> Colonial discourse knows no geography. Wow, amazing. He's been right, he's been reading that. You can see, you can trace him reading that, Crane. Uh, so I've read the books uh, quite a lot, and I'm, I'm interacting with Mangani in the book, in one sense. Sample, do we need a psychology in Africa? How do we remake our world, a world shattered by uh, settler colonialism? Absolutely am amazing question. <coughs> uh, uh, I don't, well, I do it here about how, uh, if I do get a chance in the next few years, how I would reconstitute psychology departments. It's a, it's a, it's a crazy ambition. 
and I'm sure nobody's going to employ me because I'm going to mess up with the with their university. And they know we have to reconstitute how we do psychology. That's the first thing, because because from where I am, the coloniality of psychology, uh, its refusal to speak to African history, to African politics, from where I am, already disables it. Right. And so one of the constitution to, to things is to, to do what, uh, so there's somebody who, we've been having a lot of discussion in journals with, a guy called uh, Augustine Noye from Nigeria in particular, uh, having a, an interesting discussion because Noye says, no, we have to have uh, courses of African psychology. I said, no, we don't have to have courses. But what we can have are departments. That's a, it's a, it's a different matter because if you are going to, to speak to African literature students, if you're going to talk to African politics, African history, you're already constituting a different department. But Noya is talking about a particular kind, at least in my, in my, my view, a particular kind of African psychology. We talk to what you're doing, right? About, about a cultural African psychology. Well, my psychology says, well, yes, that's, we need that too, but we also need a material, a kind of uh, structural African psychology that talks with materiality of life in the, in the Shetlands, in, in all of that. Um, so here, here's my last uh, thing, if you indulge me. A decade ago, I would not have advised anyone to study psychology. I was disillusioned with it. Psychology, I would have said to use Londi, um, is bad for your mental health. <laughs> <laughs> and what it to turn out that being a psychologist, Sibod Lamini, is good for your economic status. We talk a lot about this with uh, my student Sibod Lamini. The likelihood is that you will be supporting the marginalization of people who most need psychological help. Today, I've reassessed my attitude towards psychology. And I go on. What I have done, and literally, to reconstitute departments of psychology, to write different books altogether. And I've written some textbooks in my life, but I know that I was just getting close to it. But now I would write them differently. In fact, I'm rewriting the textbooks that I, that I, I need to rewrite. I need to rewrite from scratch. Not uh, put the African examples in the textbook, rewrite them completely. And there's an example I give here, by the way, I haven't been asked this, but if nobody asks me, I mark thesis, like all of you, I mark thesis, some of them are great, are really great. And I get this thesis that codes Judith Butler, Foucault, Corinne Squire, I mean all the feminists that are fantastic and the queer scholars. And technically it's Perfect. And at the end, I know that this person is doing an injustice to themselves. At least from where I see the world right now. Do you give that thesis, if it's a master's thesis, do you give it an A? Because they've just done exactly what coloniality says you should do. They have not read one book. They have not read Pauline Hontonji, they have not read Césaire, they haven't mentioned even Fanon. I mean, Fanon is, no, you know, known. They have not written anyone, read anyone, written anything about that says, this is what people have been doing. Samir, Amir, they have, I know they're in psychology, but you can find people who have done it. They have not read Mangan, and then one of them I interact with. One of them I says, so I've marked, you've got an A. Can we talk about this? Because technically you're right, but that's all throughout. You have just done precisely what, what I think we, are, we, have, we have done to our students. And they could be black, they could be white. That they have done injustice because they have reproduced precisely that Africa has no thinkers.
question Turbo, that you're asking to me in psychology in Africa quite interesting because does that so like sort of assume that psychology didn't exist in pre-colonial Africa or you know <coughs> is it an issue of that we had a different approach to psychology and also then you know I have this issue in African culture where when someone is meant to be troubled isn't it? we often just dismiss it as well oh I'm tarati simply translated means that oh, this person's been cursed. So it also then, I'm also then asking myself, have our languages evolved with sort of the new experiences of, of African people? How do we describe new forms of pain, such as colonial trauma? You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, I, I just noticed that our language is limited in terms of how we describe these new forms of, of pain as well. I think that's something that needs to be considered in decolonizing psychology. Okay. Um, uh, thanks, Prof. It was great listening to you. you know, I spent three years listening to you all this time. Uh, and I think. Are you being ironic? <laughs> <laughs> We go to PE and you become a rock with me. It's very tricky But I think, I mean, uh, and, and I just want to, I want to both sort of raise, uh, answer Seppo and, and anybody. And I said this earlier, I think, <coughs> people don't like psychologists. And they have a good reason. I am I'm that kind of psychologist, at least. Who is supposed to practice therapy. And we are not doing it well, if we are being honest. Because you are right that when you are sitting with somebody, I mean, this was a question earlier on this year, uh, conference uh, at UWC about, uh, in America, they're doing this thing, um, they're talking about uh, black PTSD. And there are problems with that because psychology is, psychology is so good more so than most disciplines that I've seen. So called sort of um, uh, what somebody calls ideological recuperation, where it just co ops it mm -hmm. and then fixes it in a particular way. That the moment where I say to somebody, you have black PTSD, I can diagnose them, I can give them, I can send them to a psychiatrist, get them medication, and I've resolved the problem. Mm -hmm. But actually, I have, because the problem is not precisely the individual, as you were saying. And psychology loves the individual. That's why it lies in sort of a neoliberal context. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, in what we long, um, an unpopular figure in, in critical psychology right now, he says this. He says, well, the psych complex is designed precisely for neoliberal conditions, precisely worried about the individual. And whether you can make this individual more efficient in capitalist societies, especially. Yeah. And this is an important question, an important dilemma that psychologists don't want to deal with. And I'm saying they don't want to because I've spoken to psychologists and they just don't want to. When you say, here's an alternative, for example, they will tell you, but is that really psychology? So the problem then, um, I, was, I was speaking to somebody in the past, but the problem is the, at sort of the level of the episteme, which, which I think this will speak about, at the level of what is the epistemological project of psychology. Mm -hmm. And the epistemological project of psychology remains very much so this American idea that I can quantify you, I can put you in this box, I can give you medication. Mm -hmm. And I get nervous every time I see, when I was doing my muscle training, I did a drove, um, and which was both a blessing and a curse. But, yes. but it was, um, he, he, um, the head of child psychiatry tells us a story of a head of child psychiatry somewhere there in, in one hospital in the Western Cape. It tells us a story of being a young psychiatrist traveling the world, being sponsored by pharmaceutical companies to go around the world. And somewhere, she's in Italy, and they come in, they give her a script, say this, tell, us how, tell people how great our medication is. And some psychologists in this country are doing the, the very same thing. This was a problem of the 80s. And some psychologists have gotten into that habit that I can go to Italy and I can get sponsored. But it's precisely the thing of the market that money becomes such an important thing. 
And I think it's one of those things of precisely the reason why we find 80% of the psychologists in this country, and it works for days, but 80% of the psychologists in this country have private practice, and this is a problem. Because you cannot know the things that you are dealing with in that organization if you're sitting in private practice, charging people 1,200 for a 15-minute session. You will not know the problems that people are dealing with because you are dealing with a small elite group of people. Mm -hmm. So to answer the question, do we need psychology in Africa? Absolutely, precisely because we are dealing with those problems, precisely because we are dealing with sexual violence and other forms of violence. We yeah. need psychology. We need a different kind yeah. of psychology in yeah. the And uh, then my question is also, was, <laughs> <laughs> was, <laughs> can, you, can you raise the need for other people? And this was the question that we had with, during the, the last session now about this Africa. What, what is this Africa for yeah. you? Uh, mm -hmm. um, for me, first of all, I was uh, also very impressed uh, with, with uh, putting yourself out there uh, to be uh, an object of uh, criticism, and that was very powerful. Uh, um, and then, you, as you went on uh, to talk about the decolonization of psychology, uh, it then, for me, uh, brought in another layer in, 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 into what you had already submitted. And then I started asking myself, well, uh, is it is it in fact uh, possible uh, 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 um, for this man to be uh, 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 criticized uh, for his contribution in, 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 in an environment that is not decolonized in itself? Uh, you know, um, for me, that 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 is is the main question: uh, the possibility of of, of one. Uh, being criticized for their own uh, contribution <coughs> in an environment that is not uh, uh, decolonized. I, I am a, a student academic advisor, a uh, 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 faculty of debate, and um, I'm just wondering as well um, how possible it is for, for, for students, for example, at the operational level, uh, to be criticized for their contributions, academic contributions, uh, 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 in an environment that is not decolonized in itself. Um, you know, because uh, when we ask uh, uh, for the people and the powers that be to look at uh, look at this individual case, you know, then you start and talk about resources and what what. Um, uh, uh, so yeah, that is that is my, my, my question. Nice. 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 Psychology's focus on the individual doesn't only just fail people in Africa, sometimes it's, it's failing, you know, well, it's failing white people also. Yeah. Um, yeah. My question um, now is in relation to African spirituality and African psychology. I defeat it because, um, well, I understand that this is about the framework and everything and restructuring everything, but then. Also, in the theory, in that the in that practical in Shalom, Kuba, um, when it comes to African spirituality, it's not really something we yellow schooling like university. So, um, I'll know the theory of sci African psychology. 
and then we tate we divanise the African spirituality. U u uya zinjani uba ababantu baza ubazina uya nzani the family is leba ilendo ilendo ba family leba yes yabo because now they are not in touch with that spiritual side of their Africanness. Oga zinjani umdu umulungu ne u u u u uza uza relate hanjani. Because like for instance here at school, right, we have like student counseling that we go to. But every time I've gone, no one has ever touched on the spirituality yeah. side. And if in a young shall be in a and not necessarily a psych a, a, a psych a Western psychological problem. Yeah. So I'd really like you to maybe enlighten me. Thank you. Uh, I was actually asked to, to uh, come to your talk by a mutual friend of ours, Professor Ali. Oh, and I'm not disappointed. Uh, but just a comment on, um, on um, what I see happening and what, what um, I think I've encountered in the literature is. A lot of people, when they criticize psychology, are actually criticizing dominant psychiatric models. Um, <coughs> um, and I, I, I think that on the day, that we're, well, there's a danger you know, homogenizing Western approaches to, to um, psychopathology in, in particular. Um, yeah, I, I, I spent a big part of a decade working in, in um, public health care, different clinics as a psychologist. Um, and I've stumbled on this field of African psychology kind of through my uh, criticism of, of um, dominant psychiatric approaches. Um, yeah, so I think we run the risk of sometimes throwing the baby out of the bathwater because there are Western paradigms that, that make space for phenomenal um, experience of an individual um, in the experience and development of um, mental illness. Um, so my question to you, though, is is just more uh, pragmatic. What would what would um, the practice of an African psychology look like? My my idea is is um, I mean we we have a lot of empirical data showing um, the the use or the, the therapeutic efficacy of symbolism, etc. Um, but to you, uh, what what would it look like? Okay, thank you very much everyone. Speaking is in Zakomo Katosi. I'm a registered counselor by profession, research master's candidate, and a clinical master's candidate. Um, for me, is I just want to, first of all, thank you so much for putting yourself out there, and I also like the fact that you are a, an object of criticism, if I quote you correctly. That is very profound. First of all, as a registered counsellor, I just want to make a comment that um, conversations like this are very important and I believe we should have them as Africans. I find myself with two different clients at my practice, if I may call it. And I must say it's easier to deal with a white client as opposed to a black. And you may ask me why. Mm -hmm. When I talk to a white client, they understand when I tell them we will use CBT, that's Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, or Solution Focus. Those are the modalities we use. But then when I'm with a black client, they don't understand what is this CBT? Why do you mean I need to change my thoughts about something? goes back to what the lady over there said about what if it's spiritual? And I find myself not knowing how to tackle that because I was not trained to deal with spirituality in an African way. Another thing, I find myself at Medusa being asked as a clinical psychology candidate, what would you bring um, to the university should we select you to offer um, African psychology? And I didn't know what to say. But what I said to them was, as a Thomas speaker from Limpopo, I grew up playing what we call Magaba. I don't know how to explain it, but you just draw a circle with stones inside, and you, I don't know. 
Yes, that. And I find myself thinking, how about we use that to young people, as me or other people, to to check cognitivity, or if I call it correctly, or to see if a young black African child can coordinate themselves when they're playing that rather than going for westernized CBT or solution focus. How about we play our games as Africans and we use psychology to determine whether they have a problem or not because they don't relate to the westernized modalities. So for me, in conclusion, I think these conversations are very important and I'm very passionate about psychology, but I find myself in a corner because the universities have not prepared me to deal with the diverse African population, especially my own people. So I think it's very important for us to decolonize psychology so that I can help my grandma back there in Limpopo, so that I can help someone else in Northwest, also here in the Eastern Cape, who is black. Thank you. Well, this is fantastic. This is where my second book is coming out. <laughs> Definitely, definitely. Uh, but Sibo, we, we will go on and talk about it. But I say this right at the, this is where I start, but I keep on returning to uh, the, the question of Africa, African in psychology, in African psychology. Um, and I start by saying Africa in African psychology is tacit. It is a bracketed word. And needless to say, African and African psychology contains the term Africa. African then signifies both people and place. This is where I start. It signifies people and place. It indicates someone or something originating in or connected to a place in Africa. That's it. That's the simplest way. But of course, I go on to elaborate what I mean by now the idea of African as, as perspective, as situatedness, as an identity, and, and, and of course, all the questions that come in where people could be born in Africa, generations, but they're, they still somehow, who was saying this in an earlier discussion, that somehow the idea of African doesn't stick to their bodies. It's the gift of coloniality, right? Apartheid gave us this gift that white, light-skinned bodies in South Africa are not African. And we have to live with this and we have to disentangle this precisely including people, people who were here before some of us, at least according to particular history, the Khoisan, the people of, who are called color people, that somehow we, don't, we, we refuse, uh, even today, at least from the official uh, discourse of government, that they are not African. I'm thinking this is the most ridiculous thing. Who would be most African than the people who were here first? But anyway, this is the gift that coloniality and apartheid has gifted us, and we have to live with this, what some people have called entanglement. It's not, it's not as if we, we, we shouldn't, or we, we, we ought not to disagree with each other about the best possible modes of thinking decoloniality. That's, that's where the criticism comes from. But of course, if you are outside of that, if you refuse decolonization, that, that is a different criticism. That's like, okay, no, really. Yeah? You, you, you disagree that color. Coloniality is here, that colonization persists. I mean, that's a different, I don't want even to entertain that people who refuse that apartheid was a crime against humanity, that colonization changed our world. So there's an internal criticism and there's an external one. So we can criticize each other on the left within that, that look, uh, Nelson, uh, no, this doesn't work here. Look, Sabelo, Kachin and Love, look, uh, Zoro, you know, the students, that this, this doesn't seem to be the modality that will work best here. So inside, there's a discussion that, that has to keep on happening. And that's, that's, that's for me, is, is where we, we should be talking about. But if somebody who, who just refuses that, that's, a, that's just a, a denial. Um, it's not only, yes, absolutely. Uh, uh, Augustine asked this, and, and the, we had a conversation, people were not there earlier, but the conversation was, and, and, and I, uh, about whether you can have African, and Shirley uh, Tate was, was talking, uh, Shirley and Tate was talking about this quite a, a lot, saying, Shirley was saying, Shirley, you were saying. <laughs> <laughs> you know what you were saying. But anyway, the point is this, and uh, Michael, Michael was saying this, and uh, no, no, it was Amos, right? That of course you can have 
there's always been a certain a certain uh, <coughs> space in the US right from from a, a long time ago where, where black women and black men created schools by the way schools uh, and then they created uh, and of course the black colleges right so uh, but outside of them you had people who, who were really teaching a, a different uh, and they were self-taught they were teaching Tanya his course talks about this about his father right you remember this they were teaching themselves a certain kind of of, of being in the world and they were getting all this literature from all over Marcus Garvey and, and everybody and, and and so yes it's possible even you know you can you can have African Americans doing a certain African however you might criticize it an African kind of scholarship of reading of thinking about the world um, and I know one person who's just created a university in Somalia and I'm thinking and of course, in the history of South Africa, there were black people, African people who were creating schools, right? Amazing schools. But somehow they vanished the schools. And that's a sad part of, of, of Tony Morrison speaks about this, right? In, in one, that somehow seg uh, a desegregation created another trauma for black people. Remember this, right? So we have lost this. So if you could, if you could create a university in Somalia with the drones flying above and, and a, 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 a Somalian focused the Franz Fanon University, right? This is uh, Hussein Bulhan. Of course, you can create it elsewhere. But for me, Noy is asking this. Says, says, can you do African psychology in the years? Absolutely. <coughs> this is the whole point, because if you bracket this word African, what you are trying to do in putting a syllabus when you're teaching at Yale or Stanford is to teach, not just in the curriculum, but to teach to see the world from a particular place, right? That the world is not only when it appears on CNN, it's not. There's a world happening in Somalia. There's a world happening in, in Port Elizabeth. There's a world happening. That's the point. And so it gets to this point that you're talking. Well, um, before I come to question of spirituality, uh, and the question I'm going to throw back to you, and this is a debate I've been having, and this is an important, for me, is one of the central debates. Is there a field called African psychology? That's the question. Because you started by saying that. Yes, you assume that there's a field called African psychology. And when, the moment you do that, well, are you saying it's a subfield of psychology? In the way American psychology is a subfield of psychology? No, you're not saying that, right? See, you see, I'm pushing each other, we're pushing each other with some people. Says, if you're saying there's an, a field called African psychology, uh, which is not what I'm, I'm saying in the book, precisely, I'm saying no, no. If you go that way, so psychology is a different object from African history, from African politics. It's a different object of study. Uh, but some people say, no, I, which I, I like this. They say, no, there is something called African psychology. We have to have a, so if you have, the American Psychological Association has about 50 plus divisions, right? Nowhere in it do you see European psychology. But it's European psychology, all of it is Euro-American psychology. So you want to insert uh, African psychology there as a sub, as a 52nd one, or, or at least the way my argument is a different one. My argument says, it's a, for me, literally, it is a, a particular way of being in the world, of seeing the world. And out of that comes this thing you call a field then. It's like masculinity studies for me, right? This is where I'm, the masculinity studies is not a field. It, it cannot be a field. Uh, it shouldn't be a field. It's an interfield at best, an interdiscipline, right? At best. But this is a debate that I want to be convinced, I want to be wrong, that actually the best route to do is to do something called African psychology. And but in South Africa, it becomes a, a whole lot ridiculous. And I'm inviting you to see some of the videos that we will be doing. Because you can't have an African psychology division of a South African psychology association. It's, it's the most ridiculous thing. It tells you about the absurdity of coloniality. So you have an African, African psychology branch in a South African association I mean, it just doesn't make sense at all. So these are two, two different views, at least, about how we, we think. Other people, of course, have said, like Lesiba Baloui, we don't need psychology. No, no, no. We can come here, but we, what we're doing is not psychology. You want to make a rejoinder before I go and continue? Um, I'm not sure what I want to say. <laughs> um, but I want to say something. OK. Um, just on that point, do we need a, do we need a and Africa, or do we need a, do we need psychology? It's kind of like saying, do we need do we need physics? Oh no, this is a different view. It's not my view. It's, a, yeah. it's a, I hear what they're saying because they're saying we need something that heals. Yeah. 
My, my, yeah. my uh, feeling is that um, the African psychology implicitly has probably been decimated by colonialism um, in practice, um, it's, which is something I'm trying to look at. Um, and the, well, the role of symbolism <coughs> in healing, etc. And I'm going to leave it there. Okay. <laughs> so let me go back to this psychology bit. Again, I, I deal with this part. Uh, and, and these are really, in, in one sense, I wanted to write a, a book about my, you know, precisely what Sipu was saying right at the beginning, what, what you said, right? Uh, and each one, is so I am not liking this, and I said this to other people, I don't like the structure of this because the idea was not, it was a book launch, not a lecture. If I want a lecture, I take one of these points and I write a paper about it. Literally, I write the papers about each of these points, the hundred points, and I've been doing this. So one of these is, well, you might be saying this, I'm not sure, I might be wrong. I'm sorry I didn't get your name. Don't move. Don't move. Don't move, please. Well, I, I, I might be wrong, so correct me if I'm wrong. Because you and Sebo are talking about psychology in a different, and maybe even Sebo, in, in, in at least two different senses. So it's like uh, the debate that uh, Pauline, Pauline Hontonji was having with, uh, with, with a number of other people, right? that there's a philosophy in this one sense, and there's a philosophy as a written text. Right, that's a, that's a debate. So there's a psychology as a modern discipline. It's a discipline. And then the psychology perhaps you're talking about, uh, uh, about when you were responding to, to Sepp, that psychology did not exist in Africa. Of course it existed, but it did not exist as a discipline. You have a, a, a language of the soul, of Ubumbam or something like that, right? That's a different language, it's not a discipline. So, but at a certain point in the history of the world, you have this, this constitution of a discipline, right? Uh, and, then, and then, of course, it still continues. Some people, I mean, the latest disciplines in the world, of course, cultural studies, and you can name it, and then the, the new interdisciplines, uh, the neuropsychologies, blah, 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 and, and they go on. But there's a difference between something that didn't exist as a discipline and something that uh, you might call, uh, when we use the, the colloquial language, is psychology abound or something like that. You know, basically you're talking two different languages. So that's that's it. That's it. And in that sense, uh, I think we do have, uh, you know, we have. And I like the way you're asking the question. The, the, um, we do have the languages, but the, the languages that we have are not the languages of the discipline. That's an important thing. You have to make the distinction between that because then if you're going to use this, the language to speak about the discipline, you have to create new, new words. You have to create the new words to talk about PTSD because you're inside the discipline. But if you're talking outside of this thing <coughs> called psychology as a discipline, you, you can use the other language and, and other concepts, other words. Um, African psychology and African spirituality. Well, I have a student who's doing queer masculinities and, and, and tradition right now. And it's, a, and it's one of the students, uh, and there's a number of, of them, of people that I know. Some are sociologists and sangomas, psychologists and sangomas. And it's an amazing, amazing thing. It's a, it's a really an amazing thing. Um, and, and we have to wait and see what's going to happen to them. Um, because what they're trying to say is, I have a calling to heal. But I also have this, this job, the where I spend eight hours, 10 hours, whatever many hours. Uh, but if they become true to themselves, they're gonna create something new entirely, but I, I suspect they won't. Yeah. But this is, a, this is just a hypothesis, right? Because psychology, Sipu has just gone on. It's a really powerful thing, and you get paid for it, right? This other one, you don't get paid as much, and you spend more time doing this than you're doing the other thing. And, and so, absolutely. I mean, the chances of being healed, uh, how can you be held by someone who doesn't know the thing you bring in? It, it's, it's just an impossibility. So you have to have, you have to have, and, and people have been doing this in health in other disciplines, that they say, well, we have to bring traditional healers with medical doctors. But no, the system is unfair already to traditional medicine men and women. It's just basically unfair because the frames have been created for them already. They say, come in here, do this. But there's a guy in um, UKZN who's doing research. It's fantastic. Bonga uh, Kileza, psychiatrist. He's doing amazing work. He's trying to do something quite simple, actually. He says he takes this, uh, the DSM, uh, the, the, the Diagnostic Statistical Manual, right? 
and he goes to the rural areas and says, here are a bunch of symptoms and talks to, to, to traditional spiritual healers and all this. He says, and here's a person, this is a case, a real case, and it says, uh, they have this, this is, what do they have? And so he's trying to match kind of DSM with the, what, what the Sangomas and spiritual healers, and that's, that's an amazing piece of work. And Tlantam is doing something similarly around the unconscious and, and psychology. So he says, give me the language, let's see whether they match. What they're trying to do, of course, is to set up a body of work that starts to answer some of the stuff. So the the, um, you see, belief, belief is something that can never be right or wrong. Belief can never be right or wrong. I mean, philosophically, belief can never be right or wrong. So, um, and, and there is a part about the discipline such as psychology that hides its own belief, right? It conceals its own belief. Uh, and says, so they regard this other belief as wrong because they're hiding their own belief, that the size system, the size says is, is not a belief. It, it's a CBT and changing your own thoughts is about belief, that you can do it, right? Instead of saying, at those bomb, they did this and, and that and the other thing. And so you can't, uh, the, the work to do, and, and, and I'm not, I turned away from spirituality. No, 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 actually it's not true. I turned away from, from uh, a devoted family, a family that prays in the morning, a praise in the evening, praise when they eat, praise when they sleep, praise when... I think this is just too much prayer. <laughs> That's just too much prayer. My family is a devout Christian family. But also they, do, they go to Sango or Mainoro. There's just black people do all kinds of stuff. They do that sort of So I thought, I want to burn some buses and some councillors' houses. The problem we have is an economic, a political problem. And I haven't been able to to, to return to prayer since then. So I'm not the best person to, to help people with spirituality, but I recognize that there are a number of psychologists, African psychologists who are doing amazing work in this, and they have, we have to criticize each other, but you know, this is not my forte. My forte is this, your problems are structural. Your problems and, you know, so we, we speak about this. And then the last question, Tsago, uh, I find it better to deal with white lines than black lines. I mean, I can't say enough about what you just said. This is, a, this is an amazing case, precisely this. This is an amazing case because the universities, and I kind of said it better, but you're doing something in that very moment that you were talking. Did you hear what Nzago was saying, right? And the moment that, of course, the, the universities are alienating you. They're doing precisely this. This is what they have done to, to many black students, that that they give you, they give us, we give you, as a teachers, a language that takes you further and further away from your people. That is true for the soul. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. I just want to, before I call on our, Albertina Sisu, fellowship, <laughs> one of two ten there. I'd just like to leave this quote with you. Until the lion learns to write, every story will glorify the hunter. Over to you. I don't want to come here, no, please. Thank you. Um, well, I think I was much better there because I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um, thank you. Um, my work is really just simple, is to pass um, the vote of thanks. Um, however, before I do that, um, I would just like to say how um, meaningful the session has been um, as someone who has faced resistance because I wanted to research about issues that affect me as an African child. Um, I've, we have also received um, resistance when we were asked why is it that the African perspective module is an elective and not compulsory for all psychology students. Um, <coughs> 
we are passed by as being dramatic or overly um, passionate as the academic sphere um, refers to us. Um, however, I am glad that um, we now have platforms um, to attend um, events such as this um, that allows us to, to, to discuss about such issues. Um, so I'm very glad that I came and I'm very happy that I now have a book that I am going to be able to relate to. That when I read this book as a um, psychology student, I'm going to say I understand this. And this is, um, this is challenging my thought process. This is making me question what I thought I've, um, I've knew. Um, most of us are in a journey to unlearn what we've mm. learned before. And um, I think this book is, is one of um, the resources that we need to do that. Um, so before I go on to pass my vote of thanks, the book is available. It's 235. Um, oh, nice. I've grabbed my copy, so I'm not sure if the rehab lady still has um, the copies outside. Um, but um, if you want the book, it is available outside in the foyer. Um, if you don't have cash, it's not a problem. She has a card machine. <laughs> so there's no excuse for not buying the book. <laughs> um, but if you've um, forgotten your bank card, the rehab is by the crowd. <laughs> so make sure that you make your way there, maybe tomorrow, I mean, on Monday or the rest of the week or whenever the book is available. Um, I would love to thank, um, first of all, the Krishat unit um, for providing us with um, the platform to, to, to be able to attend and um, host such um, events. Um, to Prof. Um, Andre Piet, um, thank you so much um, for the amazing work that your, your unit is playing in our university. Um, to the organizing committee, uh, this is such a well attended um, event, so um, a big thank you to you because I am sure it was a lot of planning and um, hundreds of memos and reminders in memo and RSVP and making sure that um, you cater for some of the people's dietary requirements. Mm. Um, it definitely took a lot um, for, for, from you, so thank you very much for that. Um, to the winter delegates um, that are present here today, um, thank you for, um, so much for, for your presence. Um, and to the Nelson Mandela University community at large, um, we highly appreciate your presence. Um, it would have been um, an event without attendees. Um, to the lovely MC, um, thank you as well um, for directing this um, book launch. I don't know if I should call it a book launch or an event, uh, but um, thank you for a wonderful job. Um, I'm sure that everyone that raised their hand were attended to. So thank you as well for doing a wonderful job. And to anyone whom I might have not mentioned, um, it is definitely not um, um, my intent not to mention you. However, I also pass my sincere gratitude. Thank you. Okay.